Watch this. Can somebody praise him for the victory you just felt like you just got? Can somebody praise him? You know what? There's times, and I've shared it all the time, there's only two times when to praise him. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. And you know what? When something's going on, that's when the enemy comes and tries to say, you know what? Oh, you know what? You try to fill your mind with all this stuff. No, that's when we got to praise him. That's when we got to praise him. That's when we got to take that moment and say, you know what? No matter what's going on, I remember what my God said. I remember who my God is for me. I remember what my God said he would do for me. I remember the promise of what's taking place. I remember. And I'm going to praise him. The Bible says if you believe it, go ahead and praise him for it. Don't wait. You ain't got to wait to see it. Go ahead and praise him for it if you believe it. You know what you got going on right now. You know what's happening. If you believe God's going to take care of it, go ahead and praise him for it. Go ahead and give him praise in his house. To let him know, you know what? I know. I know, God. I know. You see, we have the promise. So we already know. Amen. No matter what's going on, no matter how bad it looks, no matter what it looks like, no matter what somebody said, we know. We know what God said. Guess what? Tell your neighbor, say, we win. Amen. We win. No matter what, we win. We got the victory. That's what his promise is. We have the victory. And, and so to, 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 you know what? It, it's crazy because, because you see God's people on this earth, you see it walking around, look like been defeated. Y'all, somewhere the script got flipped. We didn't get defeated. The enemy got defeated. We won. Amen. We won. We have the victory. And, and Y'all, I, I just think about what's going on. I was talking to some folks this morning, and thank y'all for praying uh, this week. Uh, uh, that, that I, I don't, I'm not a, I don't know how to say it. I, get, I, don't, I don't do crud good. It makes me mad, <laughs> amen. It aggravates me. So I thank y'all for praying and, and uh, just, just, just thinking this morning about how good God is and how he carries us through things. And I was talking to uh, Amber Whitney this morning. We was talking about and, and some things, and just talking about how, how you know what, that, that God just takes care of us. Sometimes we get caught up in the moment, you know what, of how we're feeling or what we're thinking or what's going on, but God takes care of us, y'all. He never has failed us. And I was just thinking about this morning, what all God is doing around here, what all is taking place in our life and this ministry. If you think about things and, and how God is working, and, and, and we, we have a the thing out front that says reaching from the youngest to oldest and the nearest to the fathers. And God's been doing that right here, y'all, and doing things. Pastor Adam shared with me this morning. He goes by on Sunday morning and shares on a radio station. And that radio station sent him a thing this morning and said, you know what, they're going to they're gonna convert into a, to a Christian radio station. They want to be a part. They want them to be a part. God just opening doors, taking care of things. We had yesterday with, with uh, 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 Richard and Adam and, 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 and uh, uh, Josh and them out with those kids with the, the, the adventure, uh, wilderness adventure, is that right? And, and all the kids, they had a, the little bass tournament, the little turn, fishing tournament that they have with them and kids coming. You know what, being trained up in the way that you go, we got the school going on, we got the things happening with all that's coming, the live nativity. Just look at what God is doing around here, y'all. And guess what? We get to be a part of it. He chose us. Amen. He chose us. How amazing is that, that he chose us? You know what? What's this? I don't know about y'all, but I think about where he chose me from, and I'm like, man. God really does love us. Amen. And, and we're going to talk about some things this morning. But you know what? Just to, 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 to think that, 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 you know what? We get to be in the middle of it. We get to be a part of it. That God loves us that much. And if you don't know that today, if you're here, if you're watching, listening, if you don't get one thing out of this service, get this part right here. God loves you. God truly loves you. doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you've done. God loves you. Uh, after service, my daughter will be out front with the angel tree. Uh, uh, anybody wants to adopt angels? And, and y'all, one of the things that, that we share with our students at the Center of Hope is this, is, 
is, you know, it's not that necessarily they're not able to do something, but you know what, their, their, their commitment is to, to be who God made them to be so they can be everything for their children that God wants them to be. And it not, that they're not just there for them this Christmas, that they're there every Christmas. And so we've asked them to make a commitment and follow through and trust God and watch what God will do with it and to be able to bless. Amen. <laughs> it is a tough time of the year sometimes for them to follow through, but, but as they trust God, <clears throat> they see and they watch. So, so what God is doing is, 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 is what he's given us over the years is an, it's an opportunity for us to pray. You know what? If God moves your heart to go and to, to uh, uh, adopt an angel or, or two or three, four or five, or all of them, ever how you want to do it, uh, see her out front out there and then come on the, uh, the 15th because I promise you uh, that it's, it's the most awesome night. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And it's going to be a wonderful time as we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Two things real quick. I, I almost forgot. I've been forgetting about it. Starting January 17th, actually on a Friday night, service at the, at the center. And then Saturday evening service here and Sunday morning here, uh, Dan Moeller will be coming back June 17th. June, I mean January. Did I say June? January 17th. January 17th, 18th, and 19th. Uh, that evening there, uh, Saturday evening here, and Sunday morning here. Amen. <clears throat> it's going to be, be an awesome time. Also, y'all, God is just blessed in North Carolina, uh, this body of Christ, and, 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 and people throughout. We've been sending stuff up, and, and, and we sent uh, quite a few truckloads of different things up of what they needed at the time. Just took up the uh, mattresses and, and, and coffee, sugar, cooking oil, salt, stuff they've asked for. Uh, but I told you all a few weeks ago, and I know we kind of put a lot on everybody recently, but, but we're, gonna do, we're doing a toy drive, and I talked to them last night. And so we're going to try to take it up in and around the 12th or so of December. They said they could do it any time before the 15th. And so we're going to try to do that. So what I'm saying is, is if you're out and about and you go in, in Ollie's or anywhere up in there and you see a, see a toy, you want to pick it up, we're going to have a, t a toy drive, and, and we're going to take it up. And what we're going to do with it, God spoke to me this morning in my prayer time, is we're going to send up those toys, but we're going to also make something up to make sure that it goes into every home for every home to understand what Christmas truly is, what the real reason for the season is as we send this stuff. Amen. <laughs> so as you, as you go out and about, you know what, if God puts it on your heart, just to pick up any little thing, just to send, we can send it. So uh, Families can, can, can have something that where, where they've had a lot taken away, but that, 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 you know what, they see the love of God through God's people. Amen. And so uh, just, just pray on that. Think about that. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful, so thankful unto you for this wonderful day that you blessed us with. Thank you for all that you've already done. Thank you for all the miracles that's already taken place. Thank you for your help, Father. Thank you for your presence, and thank you for honor us with your presence and glory. Father, thank you for what you have done, what you're doing, what you're about to do. Thank you for your word. Father, help us to receive this word, to understand your word, and Father, to apply your word. And Father, as always, let it be all of you, none of me, and let your word do exactly as you planned and purpose. And we love you, we thank you, we praise you. We ask all of this in your son Jesus' precious and holy name. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. 1 Kings 8, 39. I've quoted this many, many times throughout the years. <clears throat> it's something that God showed me in spoke to me many years ago, and we're going to talk a little bit about this morning. 1 Kings 8 and 39, God's Word says, Then here in heaven your dwelling place, and forgive and act, and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. For you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. Y'all, we talked last week about knowing a tree by the fruit that it bears. Knowing a tree, seeing a tree by its fruit. And simplifying that is knowing that an apple tree don't bear orange. A pear tree don't bear lemons. Amen. A good tree don't have bad fruit. A bad tree don't have good fruit. A good tree, 
If it's a good tree, everything on it's not dead. Amen. It's not bad. It produces, produces good fruit. And we also talked about how people sometimes use that scripture for judgmental purpose, to judge others. But that's not what Jesus was talking about here. He was intended for it to be taken to understand what he's saying is, is to be able to recognize, not to judge. Watch this. God's word says, judge not lest you be judged. Amen. It says, what judgment you use shall be judged back to you. So he didn't give that scripture for us to look at somebody and make judgment of it. What Jesus was telling us is how to tell the difference in the bad and the good. Amen. How many knows that, that he tries to lead us in the right way and show us the good things? So he's trying to show us and tell us the difference in the bad and the good. And y'all, as I was reading this this week, Reb God brought a revelation to me, something that I've read this scripture time and time and time again, and I've never thought about it this way, but God began to show me something as, as he was preparing this message. What's this, y'all? What Jesus was talking about right here, he was telling God's children what trees to partake of, what was not to. It seemed like we've read that somewhere else in the Bible, amen? All the way back to the book of Genesis, Amen. When God told, he, he, he took a walk with Adam and he said, hey, these trees are all good. That one's bad. Don't touch it. Or he said, don't partake of that tree. He was telling, telling what the good things to do and what, what, what was not, what not, got not to do. Think about what I'm saying. I've read many times, but this just hit me. You know what? He was trying to direct Adam in the garden and he's still trying to direct us today through the trees. Amen. Did somebody hear that? I never thought about that, and he gave that revelation. He said, you know what, this, he, I'm continuing to do that, to show. As he told Adam, and he's still telling us, he's trying to direct, still doing the same thing. Is somebody with me? Think about it. Still in the garden with the trees, showing us what's good, showing us what's not good, what to partake of and what not to partake of. In the same way that, that, that God walked with Adam. You know what? How many times that we, we pray at times, God, you walk with Adam. I want you to walk with me. He said, I did. I took you to the, show you the trees. I'm still taking you to show you what's good and what's not, what to take of, what not to take of. Amen. What we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do. He's with us. He always has been. He always will be. He spoke to me this morning about a message. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And to understand what that truly means. But to think about this, from the beginning of time until now, he's still with us. Amen. He's still showing us. He's still directing us. And he's still teaching us if we'll learn. God's people are destroyed for what? Lack of, knowledge. Lack of knowledge, not knowing the truth. And you know what? He's still teaching us. He's teaching us with the trees, showing us what's good, showing us what's not good. And then when he does that, just like it was with Adam, the ball's in our court. He puts it in our court. He said, okay, I showed you. Now who's it up to? It's up to us. The ball is in our court. You know what? It, it's like it was with Adam. Showing us what's good, showing us what's not good, and then directing us and, 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 and helping us, give us instruction, and it's up to us to follow the instructions. Y'all, if, if I've ate the rotten apple and I know it's rotten, hello, how am I going to complain about what happens to me? How am I going to complain? If I know this apple's rotten and I know it's been pointed out that it's rotten, how am I going to complain about how I feel after I eat it? Because I've been told, amen. If I partake of what, what he's shown me is bad, how can I complain about it? Does somebody hear me this morning? Y'all, he's explaining the good and the bad and then telling us what we need to do. It can't get no plainer. Amen. He's showing us what's good and what's bad, and he's telling us what to do. It, it can't get any plainer. He says, stay away from the bad fruit. What's this? Bad brings bad. But good brings good. Amen. Good produces good. I want to share something with you this morning that God showed me a long time ago. I've heard people say for years, different times, and some saying it for, for you know, just out of a statement, but some saying it for other, other reasons. I've heard people say, oh, I know your heart. I've heard people say, I, I know their heart. And in some cases, people Again, use that in judgmental ways to say they know somebody's heart, like they're trying to say whether they know whether or not somebody's saved, which is ridiculous. Y'all, what's this? 
God's word says I can see the fruit, but I don't know what's in your heart. I don't know the heart of every person. God's word says right here that you alone, God, you alone, God, know the heart of every person. Not me. Amen. It's not, I can't, I can't look in your heart, and, 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 but, but you know what? He does. It says you alone know the, know the heart of every person. You, that means God, and God only knows every heart. Amen. Now, what's this? Think about what he's saying here. I don't know your heart. Does somebody hear me? But he does. Amen. I don't know anybody's heart, but God knows everybody's heart. He knows everything about each one of us. What's this? He knows what's on our hearts and our minds right now. Oh, somebody started trying to cast something out right then. <laughs> somebody told me, I wasn't thinking that. <laughs> yes, he was. And he knew. Amen. He, look, we say that sometimes to people. He knows, what, he knows what you're thinking about right now. It's like, mm-mm. <laughs> Get out of there. He knows the heart. No matter what I say, y'all, he knows the heart. Y'all, what this is saying is no matter what I, what, I, what I say, what I speak out of here, he knows what's in here. He knows what's right there. He knows the truth about what's inside me. No matter what I'm talking, no matter what, what, what you know, how good I try to make it sound, he knows what's in my heart. He knows everything about me. Amen. Let's look at the flip side of that. He knows our heart no matter what anybody else says, too. Did somebody hear me? He knows the heart. You see, a lot of people base their moving forward and their salvation based on what other people think about them, what other people say about them. It doesn't matter what somebody else says. You know what happened to you. It doesn't matter what somebody else says. I tell people all the time, you know what, some folks, if somebody's got to tell you you got saved, you probably didn't. But you know, you feel it, and you know it. It doesn't matter where somebody else believes it or thinks it or whatever. You know, you know what, and he knows. That's all that matters. To understand that, that, that it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks or says. It matters what God sees. Only you and God knows what's truly happened in your heart. Only you and God. A lot of times people, you know what, will, will, will go forth and, you know, have a desire in their heart. To, 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 to have a relationship with him and, 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 and allow for people and things around and, and pe- what people say and people do, you know what, interfere with that. But this is between you and God. That's what I tell people all the time. That's why I talk about personal so much. You know what, it's a personal relationship. It's personal. It's between me and God. It's between you and God. It has nothing to do with what everybody else thinks, says, or does. You know what, it's between me and him. You know what, I seek to, to please him because, you know what, he, and I love him because he first loved me. Not based on what you do. Not based on what somebody else does. Not based on what religion does. Not based on what the preacher does. Not based on what somebody else says or does. You know what? It's between me and him. What's this? Because you know what? He's with me 24-7. Everybody else ain't. Amen. He's with me when it's quiet. He's, He's with me when it's loud. Amen. He's with me at all times. And you know what? It's not based on what, what somebody else says or thinks. It's based on what he knows. And he knows my heart. He knows what's real and what's not real. Amen. What's this? No matter what I say, he knows whether the words I speak are real. Y'all, to understand that, 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 that you know, it, it doesn't matter in your walk, in your life, you know what? What anybody else says or thinks about you, they didn't die for you on the cross. He did. Amen. He died on that cross for us. Only you and God knows truly what's in your heart. Y'all, God knows the heart of every person. That's where he's looking. It's not just in what I'm saying. He's looking upon the heart. He's looking at everything that's right here. I don't have to say a word. He knows. Tell your neighbor, say, he knows. <laughs> you see, I can talk a good talk, but God's looking. God knows what's in my heart. And if it lines up, if my heart lines up with my talk, 
then that's what he's seeing. Amen. He's seeing the good. Look at 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. I love to hear the pages turn. People got that, that, got that Bible. God's word says, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. He said, don't look at the outward appearance. You know what? Don't size them up because of who you think they are. Don't look at their, 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 what gifts and talents they got. He said, I don't see as man sees. I look at the heart. God told Samuel, don't look at how he looks. What's this? Because sometimes we do. We size people up. We size people up by, by their words or or, 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 you know what, they'd be good at this or good at that. We size people up because of their outward appearance. We size people up about the way they speak or how they, they, the, the knowledge they have or the gifts, the talents that they've been used. And sometimes we get caught up in using bodies. Hello? We get caught up in placing bodies and using bodies. God said he don't look at as man looks. He said he looks upon the heart. He sees the heart. He sees what's real. He sees what's true. So you know what? He said, he said I don't see as man does. He said, so don't, don't, don't look on the outward appearance. Is somebody with me? You see, Samuel had brought all of Jesse's sons based on what he was seeing, based on what he thought Jesse's, all the ones, you know, the big strong ones, brought all that because God was about to anoint a king, and he brought all these ones. But he didn't even bring David. He didn't even bring David to the, to, the, to the anointing, the one that God was going to anoint. Why? Because he thought David was too young. He thought David was too little. He thought David was just this little shepherd boy out tending the sheep. And he had all these other reasons, so he didn't even bring David. Well, what's this, y'all? God knew David's heart. God knew David's heart. You know what, where he was at, what he was doing, God knew everything about him, no matter what he looked like to man. You know what, man said he was this little bitty, you know what, skinny kid. Samuel's seen a shepherd boy. God's seen a king. Did somebody get that? God's seen a king. They was looking at the crowd that that Samuel brought. God was looking in the shepherd, I mean, in, in the pastor. He said, wait a minute, you forgot the one that I look upon his heart. No matter what it looked like, To man, God said, you know what? I don't see like you see. Somebody's starting to see. No matter where you've been, no matter what your past looked like, watch this, y'all. When God chooses you, it don't matter what nobody else thinks or says. It don't matter what nobody else does when God chooses you. You see, he sees your heart. He don't see who he was. He sees who we are. Oh, somebody ought to be shouting. It ain't where we was, it's where we're at. It's not what we did, it's what we're doing. It's not who we was, it's who we are. It's who we are now. Amen. And that's what he's seeing. You see, he's seen something in David that others didn't see. Because he's seen his heart. He's seen something in David, you know what? Because he's seen David's heart. He looked there, you know what? He's seen, he's seen this one that, you know what, that was a willing vessel. This one that was a servant, this one that was willing, you know what, just to whatever it takes to please God, you know what, I'm going to trust God. He's seen this, this one that, that, you know what, that, that would be, that he said, you know what, I can use that right there to go out against that giant. I know he don't look like much to everybody else. I know he, he looks like where he come from and what he's done. He's a rough little character. He's a rough little dude. But you know what? I can use him. I can, you, I can take him and do something with him. He didn't raise up in church. He ain't been the king all his life. He ain't been in royalty. He ain't been in all that. But you know what? I don't care where he come from because I made him, I created him, and I know what's in his heart. 
You see, that's the way in religion people look at, well, you know what, that can't be used because they've been this before, they've been that before. Not according to my word. You know what, according to the word of God, God's word says that, you know what, he said we become a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become brand new. Everything. It's not who I was in the world. It's who he made me to be. Amen. It's who he made us to be. To understand that, that, that you know what, man, man looks at, at a way, that, you know what, based on where we come from. Oh, how much, how much we can do this, how much we can do that. I want y'all to know, and it's got nothing to do with me. It's all glory be unto God. When God saved me, I never picked the Bible up. Then you know what? A Bible, didn't want to look at a Bible, never read a Bible, never went through a Bible. And then one day God said, you're going to preach. I said, what? <laughs> you're going to share the word. I didn't know the word. But he said, you know what? Get in the word. How many knows he can take somebody don't even like to read and make them read, help them to read, and help them to get something? Amen. Because he looks upon the heart. He handpicked each and every one. What's this? Well, how amazing it is to think he chose you. He chose you. He chose us. Handpicked us. You know what? You think about it. When, when, when people get to, to choosing up sides for, for, for games or whatever they do, they try to choose that one that, that they know that has done this, can do that, and got all this ability, got all that talent. God said, I ain't looking at all that. I'm looking at the heart. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. I choose you. <laughs> to think that, that God chose us when you wouldn't even choose yourself. Amen. When we wouldn't even choose ourselves, when we wouldn't even, you wouldn't consider ourselves to say, you know what, matter of fact, we argue with God. God, how can you use me? Sometimes you just kind of think he says, let it go. Leave it alone. You ain't going to win this argument. Because see, he looked upon the heart. He didn't look at us. He didn't look on the outward appearance. He said, you know what, I know what I created you to be. I know who I craved you to be. I know what you got inside you. I know the potentials in you. I know your heart. And he does. He knows. Tell your neighbor, say he knows. knows. Y'all, he knows. He's seen something that other folks didn't see. Because he knows. Amen. Amen. What's this? You couldn't even imagine being here, much less somebody else imagine you being here. You couldn't even imagine being here. And you thought, and some of you may still be thinking you're here for whatever reason. Oh, I come just to, to visit somebody. I just come here today just to, to, to you know what, because somebody asked me to come to church. I just come. No, you know what, you're here because God divinely appointed this time to tell you that you are somebody in Christ Jesus. God divinely appointed this time to tell you that he chose you. God divinely appointed this time to tell you he loves you. God divinely appointed this time to tell you that you can when you said you can't. Amen. That you can. He brought you today. He brought us today. He had you tune in watch today to realize that, you know what, he chose you. Quit worrying about what somebody else thinks or says about you. Quit worried about, you know what, what somebody thinking that, you know what, basing what you can do on your qualifications or what somebody else thinks you got in qualifications. You know what, he hand chose you because he already gave you what you need to be able to do what he wants you to do. Amen. <laughs> to fulfill the purpose. He chose you. You see, he's seen something that others couldn't see. He's seen something that we couldn't see. He chose us because he knows that through him, we can do all things. All things. Amen. Through him, we can do all things. He chose you. He chose me because he knows our heart. He knows our heart. You know what? It's kind of amazing if you think about it. If you just sit and think about it, it doesn't matter what you, where, all of us was born in a world of sin. We all come from the same place. You know, a lot of people would say, no, I had never been through what they've been through. We're always born in a world of sin. And one sin wasn't worse than the other sin. 
One sin wasn't bigger than the other sin. Sin is sin is sin. And Jesus said that we had to be born again. To, we had to be forgiven of that sin, no matter what that sin was. You know what? Some people categorize sin. Some people color code sin. Little white lies. I don't know who color coded lies. Because a lie is a lie is a lie. Just like to, to, to take something, whether you took a penny piece, of it, well, I, they don't have that no more. Bubble gum, I was going to say, but it's but, so where you took something, where, where you, some people call it little, you know what, big, there's no big and little. Sin is sin is sin. So we're all on a, we was on a level playing field. Bottom line is, one, one thing, we all needed Jesus. And he came. And he's coming again. He's coming again. Amen. He came and he died for our sin. That God could bring us back into our true identity to show us the potentials inside of us. To say, hey, I chose you a long time ago. Even before you was in your mother's womb, I chose you. I chose you then. I chose you. And to think now that no matter where you've been, what kind of life that you had before Jesus, to think of where he brought us from and what he brought us to. And what's this? So many people in tradition, religion, and man miss out on so much because they just come and sit, think they're waiting on Jesus. He said, no, I'm waiting on you. I put that potential in you. I put this life in you. I put the things in you to be, to be able to go forth and to make a difference on this earth. You know what? You're not here just to sit and wait. You're here, you know what, to be about the Father's business. He said, I put everything in you need to be about the Father's business. There's people sitting here right now. You say, there ain't no way he could use me. The only thing that can stop him using you is you. You know what? He said, I'm just looking for willing vessels. I'm looking. You know what? I pray it over us every day that we be available, usable, and teachable. And you know what? If we're open, if we're open to be available to him, all of a sudden, you know what? You'll be talking to somebody and share something with them you didn't know you had in you. I'm sure some of you did that. I know what happened in my life. You know what? As, as a young Christian, if somebody wanted me to talk to somebody, I thought, I don't know what I'm going to. And I said some things. I, as a matter of fact, I stopped kind of in the middle and kind of within myself and said, where'd that come from? He said, I'll give you all things. He said, when in time, you know what to speak? He said, don't worry about what to say. He said, the Holy Spirit will bring it up out of you. I'll bring out the say. You see, here's why that you got to understand that you know what? He can, and he will use you because it's him, not you. It's all of him. It's not, all, not us. It's him. And to be able to say, you know what? I'm just a willing vessel. I just want to be a, a willing vessel. You know what? To believe, that's the key word, to believe that he can use you. No matter who you are, you know what? Don't base it on what you think or what somebody else thinks. Base it on what he said. Amen. What he said. <clears throat> there's, look, there's enough potential in this room right here. And if we add all that to those watching and listening, it'd blow the top off of this place. There's so much. Watch. I, I'll say it and I'll always say it. You know what? This whole world could be reached starting with just, just this congregation. If, if, God's, if, if we believe that, you know what, he can use us. Because you think about this, if one person is saved, if one more person is saved through them, think about it now, and then one person is saved through that person, and one through that other person, and one through, you know what, eventually it's going to go through this whole world, amen, the whole world is going to be saved. I believe, I believe it can be. I don't care what, what people say. They say, oh, you know what, this nation's bad. No, this nation's not bad. Look around. You know what, there's good stuff happening everywhere. There's good in people. Find good. Look for good and you'll find good. Amen. Look at the good, you'll find good. There's good going on. You know what, things are happening. And, and the way that, way that that good will get greater is when God's people rise up and do good. You know what, show the good. And what's this? Not religion. Not because what we're trying to get somebody to come in a building. It's because, you know what, we want people to see the love of God. 
We want people to know the love of God. We want to love people unto the Lord. We want to get people unto the Lord. You know what? We want to spend eternity with everybody we come in contact with. Amen. We want to spend forever, you know what, with God and with all those. And that's what it's all about is to be able to go forth and know, you know what? See, here's what we do. We think, you know what? Religion tries to jump in. God using me, that means to preach, teach, or to sing up here or to do that. No, that means to be available to God, do whatever God wants you to do, wherever you're at, at whatever time it is. Amen. To be there for God. You know what? God placed you where you're at every day in your life. God placed me and you everywhere where we're at every day in our life to be a witness for him. He set you and bring people before you every day so that you can tell somebody about him, so that you can share the love of God. You know what? That's what being available it, to him is. People think that it's got to do with, you know what, i got to be this at the church. i got to be this at that. No. You know what? Just be available every second, every minute, every hour, every day for God to work through you to talk to somebody and share with somebody and to show the love of God. And, and you think about it. That's why I say I believe the whole world can be saved. And I believe it can start right here. You know what? All the love that's oozing out of everybody here right now, I feel it. All the love is right here. You know what? What if this just run out in the streets? Then you know what? It's going to be in these households. Then if it's out of households, it starts easing out. It's going to get in the, in the neighborhood. Then it's going to get in the, in the community. Then it's going to get in the city. Then it's going to get in the county. Then it's going to get in the state. Then it's going to get in the next state. And on and on and on and on. And you know what? The whole world can be saved. Amen? I believe that. I believe that. And that's what, you know what, when people quit condemning their self and say, well, he can't use me, look where I've been. Don't look where you've been, look where he brought you from, look what he's done in your life, look what's happened in your life. You see, if you keep looking where you've been, you're still in the past. But God's word says you don't have a past. Oh, but we got a future, praise God. Oh, we got a future, amen. I don't have a past, but I got a future. And to realize that future is, you know what, to be about my father's business. What's my father's business? To go love somebody. Go love somebody. I, you know what, God didn't give me a Bible to go beat nobody up with. God didn't give me a Bible to go tell somebody how wrong they are, how bad they are. God didn't give me a Bible to go tell somebody they're going to hell. You know what, watch this. I wasn't the smartest person in the world, but nobody had to tell me where I was headed if something didn't change in my life. I knew where I was headed. I needed somebody to tell me there was hope I could come out of that. I needed somebody to tell me that they loved me. I needed somebody to tell me that I had, I had a chance and I had a decision. And praise God, somebody did. Somebody did. And so to, to, to understand that, 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 you know what, it's, it's not about, it's not about what, what, people say or what, what somebody, you know what, he didn't give us th this, th what he's done in us to go make somebody feel bad or condemn somebody. God's word says, I, I, I know John 3, 16 is, is the most quoted scripture in the Bible, I'm sure. But John 3, 17 has always been one that, that grabbed hold of me. He said that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. Amen. Thank God he didn't come to condemn us. Amen. He didn't come to say, I told you so. He didn't come to put us down. And if he didn't come to condemn us, then we got no business condemning nobody. Amen. We got no business whatsoever condemning nobody. He's faithful and just to cleanse us. I'm about to holler up in here. He's faithful and just to cleanse us of all. Somebody say all. All unrighteousness. Amen. To cleanse us of all of our past. And what's this? When you know that, you understand it's about love. It ain't about religion. And then you get to share it with somebody else. Then you get to share that love and love on somebody else and tell them, you know what, it don't matter. You can argue the point all you want to, but you know what, God loves you. He, he loves you no matter where you've been, where you come from. You get to share that love with somebody else. As I said a while ago, God placed you and me. It's not about Sunday and Wednesday. God placed us everywhere we're at every day to be about his business. What is his business? Love. To show the love of God. We get an opportunity every day to talk to people. Whether you go in a store, whether you run a store, whether, whether you, you know what, own a workplace, whether you're in construction, whether you're, you know what, at, at a desk, wherever you're at, you get an opportunity to meet people every day. We get an opportunity to sow a seed, a seed of love. You know what, not religion, but a seed of love to tell people that, you know what, you're loved, to show 
When I said a while ago, people say, oh, this world's bad. You know what? We get to show the good. We get to show the good. We get to be the good. We get to, 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 to let his fruit bear. And what is this fruit? Verse 1. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Faithfulness. Goodness. Kindness. You know what? The, the self-control. We're still working on that one. Amen. But to understand that, 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 you know what, every day, what's this? It's not about trying to, I don't wake up every day trying to be a Christian. Praise God, I wake up because and thank God that I am one. Amen. And what's a Christian? You see, a lot of people have, have that, wake up trying to be a Christian because they got a list of rules and regulations wrote out. That ain't what God did. You know what? He said a Christian is just, here's a simple, simple definition, definition, a follower of Jesus. To follow Jesus. And you know what? So what does that mean? Does that mean to do what he did? And he already told us. that He said we can and even greater works. So to, be, to follow Jesus, what did he do? He went about, you know what, loving on people. He went about, you know what, to, to share the good news, to share the gospel. You know, it's not about the rules and the regulations of religion and man. You know what, it's about going forth and loving. You know what, and, and, and knowing, understanding that love you know, as we share it, because to understand that, 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 that we love him because he first loved us. What's this? He didn't let us die in our midst. He didn't let us die in our sin. Amen. Oh, somebody ought to be shouting. He didn't let us die. You know, you know, what, you know, what, you know what that mess was? He, he didn't let us. And, and to know that because of that, because of that, you know what, that I feel the love. I don't feel the religion. I feel the love. You know what? That he, that he made it personal with me. He made it personal with you. This thing keeps on. He made it personal to understand that, that you know what, that this is, this is and, and, and when you understand that personal part, then you get to realize that, hey, he created me. He created us. And he chose us. He chose us to go forth and fulfill what he has planned and purpose. How many knows everybody here, I don't care who you are, where you come from, here watching this, you have a purpose. The word of God says so, amen. You have a purpose. You have a purpose to make a difference on this earth for him. Because you know what, we're just passing through here. What? You're just driving the bus to load everybody up with you. You're just driving the bus to be able to take everybody as we go to be with him, Amen. We're just passing through. It don't end here. Oh, somebody ought to shout it right then. It don't end here, praise God. You know what? It don't end here. I'm going to live forever. How about you? Eight people. I'm a, amen. I'm going to live forever. So what's this, y'all? That means, you know what? We're here to, to, to take everybody with us that we, we can take. You know what I heard Nicky Cruz say one time? He said the only kind of victory that Satan would have is if he could take somebody with him where he's headed. You know what? I got off that bus. I got on a new bus. Amen. I got on a good bus. And I want, I, want, I want to talk to others about getting on that good bus. And you know what? Riding on a good bus. Amen. That's what our purpose is, y'all. Y'all. Samuel had brought all of Jesse's sons based on what he was seeing, based on the way he looked at them. Amen. Watch this. If I look down this aisle right here, I could, I could say, you know what, this one is that. This one looks like this. This one looks like that. This one is this. And that's what, you know, he said he looked at his sons, and he had seven of them, seven of them he brought, you know what, that, that, that said, you know what, well, this one's pretty big right here. This is pretty stocky. You know what, he'd make a good king because he'd go out and fight. And this would be this, this would be that. You know what, honestly, there wasn't none of them in the whole group stronger than David. But he based it on the statue, based on what he's seeing. He didn't even bring David with him. He didn't even go get David and bring him out of the pasture because he thought, as I said, that he was, he was too, too little. He didn't, he, 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 he looked at, at, at all the rest of them and you know what? And then God asked him, he said, none of these. I don't pick any of these. Is there not another one? How many knows that God knew there was another one? Oh, if somebody had caught that right there, this whole place had been erupted. When everybody looked all around, there was another one. There's another one. There's another one. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm that other one. I'm that other one. 
Watch, everybody else might have forgot, but my father didn't forget, praise God. Everybody else might have forgot about me, but God didn't forget about me. Everybody else may have gave up on me, but God didn't give up on me. Amen. There was another one. He told Sammy, he said, go get him. Go get him. You see, God knew David's heart. No matter what he looked like to man. He might have looked like this little puny feller. How many knows, what's this? Well, I can talk to my, my son-in-law and my son and them, you know what, they, and, and, and the different ones that's been in sports. You know what, they've seen them ones and, and, and anybody that's played where this one looked like it was too little, but they put that little one up on that line up there and that was blocked better than anybody got up there. That was tougher, had, had a stronger heart, had more inside of them than any. You know what, but, but you know what, looking at them, they look like, ah, uh, they a little bit. And they get up there, they talking about, how many knows when you see them like that, all of a sudden you see them and they get bigger in your eyes. They, they're still the same size out here. You see, God was looking at David's heart. He wasn't looking at the rest. He's looked at it no matter what he looked like. Somebody's starting to see. No matter what your past looked like. No matter where you've been. No matter, you know what, how, how, how things went in your life. God chose. He chose you. He handpicked you. He said, you know what? No, nope, I ain't looking on outward appearance. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. For this purpose right here, for that purpose, I got, I choose that one. I choose them. Each one. Because he looked at the heart. And you know what? Even with our own self, but where we was and what we was doing and where we come from, we couldn't imagine that God would, would pinpoint you. And how many knows that like Jonah, a lot of us run for a long time. We run. God can't be talking about me. Yes, he is. This morning, God's speaking to folks here right there. You know what? You realize today that God's been speaking to you and you've been running. He said you can run, but you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. Amen. Somebody's starting to see when God chooses you, he's choosing because what he sees in your heart. No matter what kind of front you try to put on, no matter how, how hard-hearted you try to act, and no matter, God sees what's in your heart. He sees. Not who you was, but who you are. He's seen something in David that other folks didn't see. He's seen his heart. He knew his heart. And watch this, y'all. This is what he's seen when he looked at David's heart. Look at Acts 13, 22. God's word says, and when he had removed him, he raised up from them, for them, David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. He removed Saul and anointed David. And this is what he said. Now, y'all, what greater compliment could you ever have in your whole life than God himself to say this, to say, I found one, a man after my own heart who would do my will. Not his will, but my will be done. He said, I found one. This is what God's seen in David's heart. He said, a man after God's own heart. He didn't, he didn't say, I found a religious man. He didn't say, I found this big, strong king. I didn't find a warrior. I didn't, he said, I found a man that's after my heart. You know, a lot of times people get so caught up in trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to be this, you know what, to, to, to try to, to do the works. He said, I found a man after my heart. A man who's seeking after me, who's seeking my heart. A man after my heart, willing to do whatever. Just wanting to be who God made him to be. God himself said this. A man to do my will. A man with such love for God that he just wants to please him. He just wants to be 
available, usable teachable. He just wants to be whatever God wants him to be. He just wants to please God. Y'all read this many, many years ago, and I prayed this prayer with my life ever since. Ever since I read this, y'all, I said, God, used to, I prayed it like this. I used to pray, God, I want to be like David, be a man after your heart, and I want to be like Solomon, filled with your wisdom. I want to be like Paul, a man with a boldness and confidence. And then one day God spoke to me, and I said, no, God, I want to be like Jesus, but I want these, these things in my life. I want to be after your heart. I want to be a man after your heart. I want to, to be wise in your wisdom, God, and I want to be bold and confident when I go and share and talk with somebody. I want to be, but I prayed years ago. I said, God, I want to be a man. I want to be a, a man after your heart. I prayed it over my life. I want to be that one that, that, that you know what, that, 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 that everything, I want to strive. You know, I know, what's this, y'all? I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, but we strive after perfection every day. Because the Bible says that when perfection comes, we'll be made perfect. Perfection is Jesus. But you know what? I want to be that one. I want to be that one that, that is striving to be the very best for you, God, that I can be. Not because I go to church. I don't want to be the be best one on, on, the, on, the, on the row. You know what? That I've made it for, you know what? That we can celebrate and have a big party one day. That I've made every service for 67 years. No, I don't, you know what, I want to be that one that Monday, that I'm after God's heart Tuesday, I'm after God's heart Wednesday, I'm after God's heart Thursday, I'm after God's heart. I want to be a man after, you know what, to go forth and to walk in a personal relationship with him. You know what, you've heard people say throughout your life maybe, you know what, you act just like your daddy, you act just like your mama. You know what, I want to be that one that says, you act just like your father. You know what, You're, you, you look just like your father. You, you. You know what, I want to be that one that, that's, that's after his heart. You know what, because what's this? You could tell when he said this, that melted his heart. He's talking about, you know what, I found one. I found, I found one that, 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 you know what, that, that's, that's sincere in here that, that wants to, 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 to be who I want him to be. And y'all, to think about that, I want to be that way. And let me tell you why I prayed that prayer, because I know I'll never forget what he's done for me. Can I get a witness? Yes. Amen. Not because I wanted to be any different than anybody else. I wanted to be this. I wanted to be that. I just wanted to do that because I know what he's done for me. I know what he's done for me. And you know what? He deserves no less. What's this? In, in a world, in, a, in a other life, in another life that I lived in, you know what? I gave 100% to the world, so my father deserves no less than that. You know what? He deserves my best. I didn't pray that prayer because I wanted to be thinking I was better than anybody else or I was more religious than anybody else. I just want to do it because I know what he's done for me. To understand how much he loves. Because you know what? To know that he reached way, 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 way down in that miry clay. In that fiery pit and pull me up out of it. Can I get a witness? If somebody knows what he done, somebody knows where he reached down and got you, can somebody give him some praise in his house? Somebody remembers where he reached down and pulled you out of. I won't ever forget. And you know what? I don't want to be a man after his heart because I'm trying to be this or that. I don't do it because you know what? God, I just love you because you know what? You first loved me. You didn't forget about me. And I want to I wanna, I wanna be the very best for you that I can be. And he said that's what he's seen in David. Y'all, I've come to see how much he loves me. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? Has somebody just said sometimes and just thought about it that you realize, man, God loves me because if he hadn't loved me, you know what? It would be, I don't know where I'd be right now. Amen. What? Because that's why he saved us, y'all. Simply because he loves us. It wasn't because he wanted to get you in a building. It wasn't, you know what, just to, just to get you to heaven. You know what, here, what's this? I want to be with my children. I love spending time with my children. And my children, my, our family loves spending time together. I'm so blessed and I thank God that we spend a lot of time together. You know what, we, we do things together. Well, you know what, I, I, I come to realize that, that, that that's daddy's, daddy's heart. That, that, you know what, I want to be with my children forever and always. 
And I thank God that God has made way that I'll be with my children forever and always because they're going to be in eternity too. But you know what? As a father, that's what he'd done. He'd done what he did because he loves us, not just because he wants us in church. You know what? He wanted us to spend eternity with him. He wants us to be with him forever and always. Forever and always. And, and to, to understand that, that you know what? That he, 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 it's, it's, it's a father's heart and, 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 and not a religion, but a relationship. To say, you know what? I, I just want you, I want you to see. What's this? What's this, y'all? It said he knows the heart of every person. Well, he said David was a man after his heart. So to, to, to. If, if you get after God's heart, you realize what kind of heart he's got. Oh, I'm about to holler. Mm. You realize what kind of heart he's got. You know what? And you, you experience that love in a way like you've never experienced it. When you, when, you, when you get after his heart, then you realize, you know what? What his heart is for us. And how much love he has for us. And you realize this ain't got nothing to do with stinking religion. Got nothing to do with that. You know what? This ain't about how many times I went to church. Praise God, I'm going to wake up Monday. And you know what? I'm getting at his heart because he loves me and I love him. And I just want to be with him. And he said with this, that David was a man after his heart. He said, and a man would do my will. Do you remember Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, what Jesus said? Jesus Started to pray. You know what? It's like man rose up in him. And, and, and the, you know what? The, 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 the man part and said, if this cup can pass, if, any, if like something can happen without me having to go to that cross, but, but then he stopped right in the middle of it. And the Spirit of God took over. And he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Now, you think about that. He said, I found a man. Who's, who's, who wants my will to be done? What's this? If we understand, we ever realize that, you know what, he wants way better for us than we ever wanted for ourselves. That's why, you know what, I want his will to be done, not mine, because you know what, I made a mess with mine, amen. I made a mess in what I was doing. To realize that, you know what, not my will, but thy will. Y'all, he loves us. I want him to see what he's seen in David's heart and mine. I got a question for us to ponder on this morning. This is what God has, 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 has put on my heart to, to share. Y'all, this is, this is what God said he's seen in David's heart. He said, I see, I see a man after my heart. A question to think about this morning. That's what he said about David. That's what he's seen in his heart. What's he seeing in ours? What's he seeing in ours today? Looking right now, what's he seeing in mine and yours? Because he's looking, y'all. Psalms 37, 4 says, if we'll delight in him, that means seeking nearness, the closest to God. Seek to be close to him. It said he'll give us the desires of our heart. He'll give us the desires of our heart. He knows what your desires are right now. He knows what you desire. He said if we seek that nearness. So, so if my desire is to be a man after God's heart, he told me how to achieve that, to seek a nearness closest to him, seeking him and his righteousness. And he said, you know what, he'll, he'll, he'll add all these things. Well, you know what, if I want to be a man after his heart, then i got to seek to be close to him, seek his righteousness, seek to do what he wants, his will. And he said, you know what, I'll be a man after his heart. And yet, what's this, y'all? That takes all that stuff that, 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 that we got in our mind, try, trying to be this, trying to be that. No, you know what? I just wake up. I just want to be after your heart, God. Yeah, that's right. And you know what? That means being in his presence at all times. That means walking with him, talking with him. That means, you know what, feeling his love. And it's going forth and realizing, you know what? That them thoughts that pop up and say, you're not this, you're not that. You say, you know what, that ain't what my father said. And you know what, I'm going for him. And then you know what, I'm going to serve him. <laughs> Casting down those thoughts. That you know what, you realize the value of the worth that you are. To be able to go forth and to say, you know what, uh -uh, I'm not listening to that. Because my God said, he chose me. He chose me. 
He chose me. And if he chose me, then he's seen something. But you know what? It don't matter what nobody else says. Amen. Would you bow your heads close your eyes, please? I asked a question just now, and, 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 and being honest with ourselves, you know what? Getting all tradition, religion out of the way, getting everything out of the way, you know what? This is what he said he's seen in David's heart. He said, I see a man after my heart. He's looking right now. What's he seeing? First and foremost, he knows where we stand. He knows if we walk in a true relationship with him. He knows if we have a relationship. He knows if we have religion. He knows if we walk in a relationship with him. He knows whether or not that we've ever truly called upon the name of the Lord. He knows whether or not that we've, we've you know what, walked with him, walked in a true relationship with him and strayed it sometimes. He knows where you're at right now. He knows where we're at right now. He knows our heart. He sees our heart. So what I'd like to do is ask everybody with heads bowed, eye closed, and I ask for that for the simple reason to, you know what, make this person between you and him. You know where you stand. You've heard this morning, we talked about, you know what, 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 what that meant. You know what, if you go on and you read about David, you read that, you know what, David made some mistakes. But when he realized his mistakes, he come before God and he made them right. He come before God and he made it right. You know what? God still seen that heart of somebody that was after his heart. I want to ask you this morning, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, or maybe, like I said, you've walked with him and you somehow turned away and got caught up, caught back up in the world. Or maybe you've been through the motions and you've come and you've prayed prayer with somebody or whatever, but you truly know today that you've never really totally, completely surrendered your whole heart. If that's you, you see a lot of people sit in a service like this, hear, watch, and listen, and, and if you say, would you, would you make a move and say, I'm, they start worrying about what somebody thinks about it, what somebody says. You heard me say already, you know what, it's not about what somebody else thinks or says, it's about what you do. It's about what God thinks. So I want to ask you to do this right here. If God has spoken that to you and you feel him tugging at your heart, ask somebody next to you maybe if you need to to say, would you walk with me? Or maybe you just want to get up and you say, you know what, today. I want to be that person after God's heart. I want to surrender everything. You know what, I, I, I don't, maybe you say, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But I will today before I leave him or before I tune out. Or maybe you say, you know what, I strayed and I feel like I crossed the line. No, you hadn't. God loves you. He's waiting on you with open arms. Or you say, today, I want God to take out of me anything that's not of him. I want his will, not my will, to be done. I want to surrender totally and completely unto him. If that's you, would you make a step of faith? Would you step up today and say, hey, He's talking to me. God's talking to me. Put pride aside. Break down the walls and the barriers. You know what? Take you. Maybe you got family with you. Say, hey, can we go? If that's you, God's calling. If that's you, are you willing? He's looking. He knows. Are you willing to surrender? Put everything aside. I'm going to pray. Those watching, listen. Those here. We got folks. You know what? There, God just keeps speaking to my heart. There's folks here. Pride's holding you back. You want to get up. You know what? Quit worried about everything else and everybody else. You know what? Let go and let God. Let God, you know what? Fix what needs fixing. Do what needs doing. And to be able to go forth and walk in this life. Have the life he planned and purpose for you. You know what? He chose you. No matter where you've been, where you come from, what you've done. And it's up to you. The ball's in your court. Make a move. Call upon the name of the Lord. If you're here, you're watching, listening, and you say, that's what I want in my life. I need Jesus. I can't make it. That's humbling yourself. You say, I can't make it. I can't live this life. I can't make it without him. I tried. Nothing else works. 
I tried everything. Nothing else works. I need Jesus. If that's you, from your heart, not just your lips, pray this prayer. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, pray this prayer from your heart. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died on that cross. You gave your life for my sin. And I believe that on that third day, you were raised from the tomb. You're alive and well at God's right hand. Today, I call upon your name. I surrender my heart. I surrender my life. I surrender all unto you. I ask forgiveness of all sin in my life. Today, I profess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. For I believe that I am forgiven, that I am saved. Today, I ask you, help me to walk out this new life that you've given me. And I thank you for it. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're so glad that you joined us today. We know that we've got people watching all over the world today. And, and we're so grateful and thankful for you. And, and as you've watched people come to the altar today, we pray that you found your altar, that place of meeting God. That's where our altar is. It's a place where we meet God. And you, we, we pray that you made the greatest decision you've ever made in your life today, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or to, to return unto the Father. And if you made that decision today, we want, we want to know. We want to hear from you. Let us know. Reach out to us. And, and, and let us know that you've made that decision because we want to encourage you. We want to pray for you. And we want you to know that you're a part of this family. So we're so grateful and thankful for you. And we're, we're so glad that you tuned in. And, and, and we look forward to hearing from you. And, and we want you to know this. God loves you and so do we. God bless you.